Hi there. Welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about the different quail diseases and the symptoms and how to treat them. Before I get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So small but mighty quail are hardy little birds most of the time. But if you're new to raising quail, here are a few things you should watch for when it comes to their health. The following diseases, illnesses, and ailments are all reasonably common in quail breeds. Keep a watchful eye on your birds and act quickly when symptoms show their ugly faces. So, quail disease. Of course, the first on the list is the deadly quail disease, otherwise known as ulcerative enteritis. While chickens, turkeys, and other birds can contract quail disease, this disease is nicknamed after the quail. Name like a quail disease demonstrates that it is a common affliction for these tiny birds. Bacteria that enter the bird system through droppings from other birds can cause ulcerative enteritis. Transmission can come from flies that have been in contact with other sick birds. Quail disease bacteria causes lesions inside the digestive tract of the quail. In most cases, infected quail will die. Chickens, on the other hand, can be treated for the disease. However, infected chickens will always be carriers and can pass the infection on to other healthy birds. Now, let's talk some of the symptoms of quail disease. Dropped wings, fluffed appearance, lethargy, watery droppings, and paleness. Here's how to treat it. If you believe your flock has contracted quail disease, you should talk to your vet or reach out to them for treatment methods as soon as you can. Once the disease has taken hold, it moves fast. Most quail will not survive the disease, but if caught quickly, you may be able to prevent the spread and treat birds in the early stages. So let's talk about prevention. It can be challenging to prevent quail disease from infiltrating a healthy flock because it is often spread by wild birds. If you raise both chickens and quail and are free range, you will have very little control of your bird's contact with wild birds and their droppings. One way to ensure that your quail do not get quail disease is by keeping them confined in, in an area away from other birds. Disease number two is coryza, just like in chickens. It's another nasty transmitted from bird to bird, often from chickens to quail or at poultry shows. It's similar to that of a cold or flu just for quail, except it can be much deadlier for quail than other birds. This bacteria causes somewhat of a respiratory infection that can be treated if caught early. Here are the symptoms. Snotty beaks and eyes, lethargy, swollen face, smelly, and they seem like they have difficulty breathing. The treatment is to consult a veterinarian to obtain antibiotics. The sooner you get diagnosis and can treat your birds with antibiotics, the better. As far as prevention goes, the best way to prevent the spread of coryza is to keep your quail separate from other birds. Never enter quail pens when you have been in contact with other sick birds. Make sure you change your clothes and wash up before entering your quail's pen. Both chickens and quail keep them separated because chickens can be silent carriers of the disease. The next one is respiratory infections in quail. Quail tend to contract respiratory infections much more accessibly than any other type of poultry. Respiratory infections can happen depending on how quail are raised. Since quail are often kept in confinement in small cages with many other quail, they can become sick with this respiratory issue if the pens are not cleaned regularly. Other types of respiratory infections can spread from wild birds to quail as well. Bronchitis, for example, is often transferred to bobwhite quail from wild birds. Quail's droppings have a high pH level, so if their pens are kept in disarray, they are more susceptible to respiratory infections due to ammonia. Here are some symptoms of respiratory infections in quail. Snotty, just like the other ones, snotty beak and eyes. Rails are rattling when breathing listlessness, diarrhea, and slowed egg production. The treatment for respiratory infections in quail is to determine the type of treatment needed for your birds. You must be able to pinpoint the exact type of infection. Your best bet if you notice any respiratory infection symptom is to talk to a vet and get an accurate diagnosis, and then they will basically point you in the right direction on what to do. As far as prevention, once again, keeping quail confined away from other birds or other types of poultry or wild birds goes a long way when preventing this infection. Additionally, keep Keeping pens and shelters clean will also help to keep quail in small spaces from getting sick due to ammonia. Another disease is coccidiosis in quail. If you've been around poultry and game birds long enough, you know what coccidiosis is and that it's a common problem, especially for young birds. Coccidiosis is a teeny tiny protozoan that enters through ingestion. Young birds have a weak immune system and it often takes time to develop an immunity to coccidiosis. Symptoms of this infection is weight loss, ruffled feathers, closed sleepy eye look, loss of appetite. The treatment is some remedies that you can find at your local AG store. Corid is a standard treatment that can be quite successful if the condition has been caught early on. If the affected quail has been ill for a few days, 
Chances are she is also dehydrated. Cord also addresses this problem, but again, only if caught early. Prevention, it is vital to keep your quail's living quarters clean to ensure they are not spending their time on soiled bedding. Keep your quail in wired bottom cages. Since coccidiosis is transmitted through feces, make sure your quail feeders and waters are cleaned regularly. Do not allow your quail to sit on or in the feeders or founts. Medicated feed is also an option, especially for chicks in the brooder. However, make sure the feed you're giving your chicks has enough protein to sustain their growing bodies. Game birds like quail often have different nutritional requirements than chickens and other poultry. Another disease is worms, parasitic worms. Sounds gross, but they always tend to be a concern among pet owners and animal caretakers. Unfortunately, quails are no exception. The symptoms of internal parasites is weight loss, diarrhea, and lethargy. The treatment, depending on the type of worm, is that you can usually purchase a dewormer that will rid your quail of their tag-along intruders. Don't wait too long to deworm your quail or they may die. As far as prevention goes, you can consider putting your quail on a deworming routine if you'd like. Some quail owners give their birds pumpkins in the fall and call it good, but if you want to be absolutely certain your quail are free of worms, use a dewormer. Pumpkin is considered a natural dewormer, but using it as a preventative measure may actually give you better results. Remember, if, if you're raising quail for meat and eggs, but you're going to treat your quail with any chemical medication, be sure to not consume anything they produce until the withdrawal period is over. If you're interested on chicken warmers and what products are good for deworming that could be used for quail as well, check out an article that I will link in the description. It's our chicken warmer article. And lastly, quail can suffer from mites. Mites are sneaky little buggers that hitch a ride on your quail, either 24 seven or under cover of darkness. They can cause more than just itchiness. They suck the blood from their hosts and cause anemia, weakness, and in extreme cases, death. Now the symptoms of mite infestations is irritated skin, feather loss, itching, pecking, and paleness. The treatment, just like worms, these parasites can be eradicated with ivermectin or for a more natural remedy, diatomaceous earth. To rid your poor quail of these relentless pests, pens should be vacated and cleaned thoroughly. Birds should be treated before returning to the permanent home. You can dust diatomaceous earth on your quail to help rid them of mites. Quail, like most barnyard birds, have plenty of diseases to keep an eye out for, but with proper prevention and quick treatment options, your quail can survive most ailments. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. With that, I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.